For what I did, I deserve death. These are the words Jeffrey Dahmer reportedly uttered to police when he was finally apprehended in his Milwaukee apartment in 1991. Dubbed the Milwaukee Cannibal, Jeffrey Dahmer remains one of the most infamous serial killers of all time. Not just a murderer, he was also a rapist, necrophiliac, cannibal, and obsessed preserver of human body parts. The body parts, of course, of his victims. In a 13 year time period, spanning two different states, this demented man murdered 17 people. After he was apprehended in 1991, Dahmer was eventually sentenced to 16 life terms. On November 1994, he was murdered by a fellow inmate. I'm now going to cover 10 little known facts about Jeffrey Dahmer. Number 10, a childhood surgery may have changed him forever. According to his family, Dahmer was a happy and energetic child until he underwent surgery for a double hernia. Around the same time, his brother was born and the family relocated several times to different parts of Ohio. Investigators believe that the combined impact of these events, beginning with the surgery, permanently altered Dharma's psyche. He was never again the same happy child he once had been and began to retreat into himself. In retrospect, some experts have suggested that Dharma did not pull away because of the surgery, but because he might have had undiagnosed Asperger's syndrome. Researchers also uncovered that Dharma's mother, Joyce, struggled with mental illness while pregnant with Jeffrey, and on a variety of prescription medications throughout her pregnancy. Number 9. Dharma was assessed with animal bones from a young age. From the time he was a child, Dharma was obsessed with animal bones, including the sounds they made and the way they fit together. Dharma took his obsession to the next level at the age of 10, asking his chemist father what would happen if chicken bones were placed in bleach. Lionel Dharma believed that his son was finally finding a passion, and the scientific passion no less was happy to show Jeffrey how to clean and preserve animal bones using bleach. Such methods, of course, played an integral role in Jeffrey Dharma's crimes as an adult, from the disposal of remains to the cleaning of skulls that were added to his collection. Number 8. He drank alcohol throughout the day. Jeffrey Dahmer began abusing alcohol as an adolescent. Classmates recalled him smuggling beer, wine and all manner of hard liquor into class and even stashing bottles into his locker. The drinking had a negative impact on Dahmer's performance as a student and compounded his isolation. His parents even hired a private tutor in hopes of bolstering his grades. Nevertheless, some students remembered Dahmer as a class clown a person who pulled pranks to amuse others. He achieved average grades, which his teachers attributed to slacking off rather than lack of intelligence, and even played tennis and spent a year in a school band. Number 7. He committed his first murder just three weeks after graduating. In the summer of 1978, just weeks after graduating from high school, Jeffrey Dahmer picked up an 18-year-old hitchhiker named Stephen Mark Hicks. Hicks was on his way to a rock concert Dharma convinced the young man to accompany him to his home where they could drink together. After hours of drinking, Hicks expressed his desire to leave. Dharma instead bludgeoned Hicks to death with a 10 pound dumbbell. The murder of Hicks couldn't come to light until the 1990s, after Dharma had murdered 16 more people and was finally in police custody. Number 6. He served as a combat medic in the US Army. In January 1979, Dharma enlisted in the US Army. He trained as a medic specialist in San Antonio, Texas, and was deployed to West Germany. From 1979 to 1981, Dharma served as a combat medic, during which time he reportedly raped two soldiers. The first victim claimed Dharma raped him, once after drugging him. The second, who was Dharma's roommate, said that he was raped repeatedly while they shared a living space. Dharma's alcoholism followed him to West Germany as well. In 1981, after being declared unsuitable for military service, Dharma was honorably discharged and sent back to the United States. Number 5. Dharma killed and stored the remains of up to four men while living at his grandmother's house. After returning from West Germany, Dharma briefly moved in with his father and stepmother in Ohio. Then, in December of 1981, Dharma relocated to live with his grandmother in West Dallas, Wisconsin. While here, Dharma worked a number of day jobs, a phlebotomist and a mixer at a chocolate factory. 
In his off hours, he frequented bathhouses and began preying upon young men. Dharma lured a number of his victims back to his grandmother's home, where he would drug, rape and murder them. Dismemberment often occurred there as well. Eventually, Dharma's grandmother asked her grandson to move out of her home because of his habit of always bringing men home late at night and due to the foul smells emanating from the basement. Number 4. Dharma enjoyed the Exorcist films. Tracy Edwards, Dharma's would-be 18th victim, who escaped and led police back to Dharma's apartment, noticed that the Exorcist 3 had been playing while Dharma tried to subdue and attack him. Forensic psychiatrist Dr. Park Dietz spent hours speaking with Dharma after his arrest in an attempt to understand the man's drive to kill. According to Dr. Dietz's testimony, Dharma often watched The Exorcist 3 as well as Star Wars Return of the Jedi before cruising for victims. Sometimes, as in the case of Edwards, he would even watch these films with his victims prior to attacking them. Number 3. He was in the process of building an altar. In July 1991, after his arrest, authorities uncovered a macabre scene. Torsos dissolved in an industrial drum filled with acid. Human remains stored in the freezer. Two complete skeletons, bleached skulls in his closet. Dharma had plans for these remains. He told police that had they apprehended him six months later, they would have come across a grand altar in his apartment, festooned with skulls and bones. Included in the altar's design was a black leather chair, providing Dharma with a place to sit. Dharma said the altar would be a place where he could feel at home. Number 2. Dharma turned his victims into zombies. The summer of 1991 was a horrific turning point for Dharma, as he killed one person each week during that period. It was also a time when he became fascinated with the notion of turning his victims into zombies. What this involved was incredibly grotesque. He would drill holes into their skulls and injected their brain with boiling water and hydrochloric acid. His main aim was to lobotomize his young victims. It wasn't long before his neighbours started to complain about the dreadful smells and odd noises coming from Dharma's apartment. Number 1. Dharma was bludgeoned to death. While serving his time in Columbian Correctional Institution, there were two attempts made on his life. One involved a knife attack which required stitches. The second attempt was more successful. This happened on November 28, 1994. Dharma was bludgeoned to death by an inmate as they cleaned one of the prison showers, unshackled and unattended. Dharma was taken to hospital but died of severe head trauma. He was 34 years old. His killer, 25-year-old Christopher Scarver, himself incarcerated for murder, later told police that he had kept press clippings detailing Dharma's killing spree and was disgusted 